Here's what the temperature has been on our earth. Now one thing that kind of jumps out at you is, well, let me put it this way. If my classmate from the sixth grade that talked about uh, Africa and South America were here, he would say, did, 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 did they ever fit together? <laughs> Most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But they did, of course. And the, the relationship is actually very complicated. But there is one relationship that is far more powerful than all the others, and it is this. When there is more carbon dioxide, the temperature gets warmer. Obviously, temperatures go up throughout history. The scientific literature is fairly clear, fairly uniform. Uh, temperatures go up, then CO2 concentrations go up. CO2 does not drive temperature. They said, if the CO2 increases in the atmosphere as a greenhouse gas, then the temperature will go up. But the ice core record shows exactly the opposite. So the fundamental assumption, the most fundamental assumption of the whole theory of, of climate change due to humans is, is shown to be wrong. So obviously, carbon dioxide is not the cause of that warming. In fact, we can say that the warming produced the increase in carbon dioxide. And in the red, we see temperature going up from early time to later time at a very key interval when we came out of a glaciation. And we see the temperature going up, and then we see the CO2 coming up. CO2 lags behind that increase. It's got an 800-year lag. So temperature is leading CO2 by 800 years. I got to spend a lot of time on this because uh, you know it well. The sun's radiation comes in in the form of light waves, and that heats up the Earth. And then some of the radiation that is absorbed and warms the Earth is re-radiated back into space in the form of infrared radiation. And some of the outgoing infrared radiation is trapped by this layer of atmosphere and held inside the atmosphere. And that's a good thing because it keeps the temperature of the earth within certain boundaries, keeps it relatively constant and livable. But the problem is this thin layer of atmosphere is being thickened by all of the global warming pollution that's being put up there. And what that does is it thickens this layer of atmosphere. More of the outgoing infrared is trapped. And so the atmosphere heats up worldwide. That's global warming. If it's greenhouse warming, you get more warming in the middle of the troposphere, the first 10, 12 kilometers of the atmosphere, than you do at the surface. There are good theoretical reasons for that, having to do with how the greenhouse works. The greenhouse effect works like this. The sun sends its heat down to Earth. If it weren't for greenhouse gases, this solar radiation would bounce back into space, leaving the planet cold and uninhabitable. Greenhouse gas traps the escaping heat in the Earth's troposphere, a few miles above the surface. The atmosphere is made up of, of a multitude of gases. A small percentage of them we call greenhouse gases. And of that very small percentage of greenhouse gases, 95% of it is water vapor. Water vapor is a greenhouse gas, by far the most important greenhouse gas. Water vapor is indeed the most common greenhouse gas. Water vapor is indeed the most common greenhouse gas. If this were to, to go, sea level worldwide would go up 20 feet. That's why Al Gore makes up 20 feet. The truth isn't scary. The IPCC report is that the upper limit of sea level rise by the year 2100 is going to be about 23 inches. Where he's misleading is that he gives the impression that this is something that is likely to happen.